Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. We're going to be living on the edge literally today with a brand new Jetson Aura Nano, a single board CPU with six ARM cores and 1024 CUDA cores. It's a pint sized powerhouse that is quite unlike the desktops or Raspberry Pis that you might be more familiar with. This episode is sponsored by NVIDIA, a rare occurrence for my channel, but fret not, NVIDIA has no editorial control here. They just FedEx me the Orin Nano Developer Kit to tinker with ahead of its release. So let's dive in and see what came in the box. All right, let's have a look at what the FedEx man brought today. Open up the box, take out a bag of air. Not very exciting, but next to it, we've got an Orin Nano. Notice the SD card that was taped to the back of the box? I did not. I had to fetch that from the garbage later. But for now, let's open it up and see what's inside. Kudos to NVIDIA on the packaging. It's actually pretty nice for a developer kit. You get a little pamphlet here that tells you next to nothing. You get a charger, which I will set aside. And of course, you get the Aura Nano itself. Next, I'll pull the power cable out, and that's everything that's involved here. Let's boot it up. Now, when you think of NVIDIA, chances are your mind jumps straight to their GPUs, whether that's for gaming, machine learning, or crunching numbers on the world's most powerful supercomputer clusters. But what's a Jetson? Well, Jetson is NVIDIA's answer to Edge AI, and that's all about bringing computational muscle closer to where the action is actually happening, be it in robots, drones, cameras, or as we'll see today, in my driveway. When you need your AI to be local and you can't strap a big desktop to it, edge computing like the Orin Nano is the solution. The Jetson Orin Nano fits into a particular but an interesting niche. It looks a little bit like a Raspberry Pi on steroids, a compact form factor but with far greater performance under the hood. And that's not hyperbole. It boasts a GPU with 1024 NVIDIA CUDA cores, making it an ideal playground for AI experiments. Don't get me wrong, this isn't going to replace your desktop for high performance gaming or anything like that. But for the price, it's an incredible little platform to explore what AI can do without selling your soul or your GPU budget. And I'm pleased to report that they've slashed the price down to 249, which is pretty impressive for a machine with, as I said, 1024 CUDA cores, eight gigabytes of RAM and six ARM cores. I'll confess that my first adventures with the Orin Nano were anything but cutting edge AI. They had actually included a bootable micro SD card with the Orin, but I didn't see it taped to the side of the box. And that means I went through the whole mundane process of downloading the SD card image from NVIDIA's website, fidgeting with the tiniest micro SD card slot that I've ever seen, and eventually booting into Ubuntu Linux. If there's a golden rule of developer boards, it's this. Your patience is tested long before your programming skills ever are. I spent far too long poking around and prodding at the micro SD port, but once that hurdle was cleared, it was smooth sailing. Fortunately, it's not something you have to do very often, so otherwise it might be a concern. One thing I should mention, I added a one terabyte Samsung 970 Evo SSD to give the Aura Nano a bit of breathing room. Now during the initial Ubuntu setup, it defaulted to installing the operating system on the micro SD card instead of the SSD. Not ideal. After some tinkering, I cloned the system from the SD card onto the SSD using Linux command line tools like DD, EFS, CK, and resize to FS to make everything fit. And with that, the system was now booting off the SSD and the performance was definitely night and day in terms of disk. It's worth the effort if you're planning to do anything intensive with it. I even repeated the setup to confirm that I wasn't given a choice of install drive, which I still find odd. Now, what makes the Orin Nano particularly intriguing is its support for NVIDIA's AI ecosystem, including TensorRT, CUDA, and a host of pre-trained models. That makes it a solid candidate for AI enthusiasts like me who might not be ready to train their own GPT model from scratch, but still want to dabble in the technology that powers things like Tesla's self-driving cars or Amazon's new Alexa. With that in mind, I decided to put the Orin Nano to work on a simple yet practical AI application, a driveway monitor. And this isn't your run-of-the-mill beam detector. Now this is a custom Python script that uses a YOLO V8 object detection model to identify vehicles entering and leaving my driveway. The goal? To teach the Jetson not just to detect motion, but to understand what it's seeing and to notify me accordingly. The script is where the magic happens. At its core, it uses the Ultralytics YOLO library, running directly on the GPU, to analyze video frames from my security camera feed in real time. YOLO, or You Only Look Once, is an object detection model that, true to its name, analyzes an entire frame in a single pass, making it extremely fast. And speed does matter when you're dealing with live video streams. So let's break the script down. The script initializes the YOLO model and configures it to run on the Orin Nano's GPU. This isn't just about speed, it's about maximizing this hardware's potential. And here's the kicker. YOLO comes pre-trained on a massive data set, so right out of the box, it already knows how to recognize cars, trucks, buses, and more. 
My job was to narrow its focus to vehicles and tweak confidence thresholds to avoid any false positives. After all, I don't want it mistaking my dog for a Corvette. The script also includes a rudimentary tracking system to keep tabs on individual vehicles. I calculate the overlap between detected bounding boxes to decide whether an object is new or just the same car moving around. That way it doesn't shout vehicle arriving every time somebody nudges their car forward a few inches. And here's the fun part. The system doesn't just detect the vehicles. It notifies me over the intercom using text-to-speech modules. If a car pulls up, it announces vehicle arriving. If it leaves, I hear vehicle leaving. It might seem like a gimmick, but it's been surprisingly effective out here in the shop. The key is keeping the announcements infrequent enough that they don't turn into background noise. In the final setup, the script processes video frames at a few frames per second on the Orin, but that's fast enough for my purposes. And the Orin Nano barely breaks a sweat doing it. The tracking system also assigns unique IDs to vehicles and keeps a history of their movements. Over time, I could extend this to include more advanced analytics, say recognizing specific cars or who might be driving them or alerting me when an unknown vehicle arrives. The Orin Nano's architecture makes it possible to handle all of this in real time. It offloads the heavy lifting, like the neural network inference, to its CUDA cores, freeing up the CPU for other tasks. It's this seamless interplay between the hardware and the software that sets the Jetson apart from, say, a Raspberry Pi or similar boards. And because it's from NVIDIA, it works with CUDA, and working with CUDA is almost a prerequisite for doing AI these days. Now let's pivot to a completely different AI use case for the Orin Nano, running large language models locally with Olama and the Llama 3.2 model. If you've ever been fascinated by how ChatGPT-like systems generate human-like responses, you're going to love this experiment. The idea is just to see how well the Orin Nano can handle processing a massively large model locally, no cloud involved, and then compare its performance to something like an M2 Mac Pro Ultra. To give the Orin a better shot, we're going to up its power to the NMAX setting. Doing so required that I update the firmware from the NVIDIA site, which I did, and then the machine came back up with a new NMAX power setting, which I selected for maximum performance. Now, before we look at setting up Olama on the Orin Nano, let's take a quick look at running it on the Pi 4 first. I used my best Pi 4, an 8GB model, so it would have the memory needed to even have a chance at running the model. And when I ran it, I found myself ambivalent in the literal sense of the word because I was of two minds about it. First, it was incredibly impressive to me that a Raspberry Pi can run a large language model at all. It's like when a dog plays the piano. It's not how well they do it, it's that they do it at all. And like the dog playing the piano, the Pi does it, but not very well. It runs at a speed of about a token a second, so it's far too slow to do anything responsive or truly useful, I'd say. You're know, certainly not going to have any kind of useful back and forth conversation with it. So let's see if the Orin Nano with the CUDA cores fares any better. The first step in this experiment was to install Olama, the local platform for running Llama models. Olama simplifies the process of using large language models on your local machine by providing a streamlined framework for downloading and running these models efficiently. To install Olama, I ran the script provided on the olama.com homepage. Next, I downloaded the Llama 3.2 model. This model is one of the most advanced open source large language models available, known for its high accuracy and capability to generate detailed, coherent responses. Using Olama's CLI, downloading the model was as straightforward as Olama pull, Llama 3.2. And with the model installed, I was ready to test its performance on the Orin Nano. To measure throughput, I used Olama's verbose mode. This mode provides detailed insights into the model's operations, like the metrics such as the tokens generated per second, GPU use, and latency per token. These statistics help paint a clearer picture of how the hardware handles the intensive AI workloads, offering valuable data points for optimization and performance tuning. The specific test involved asking Llama 3.2 to generate a 500-word story based on a simple prompt. Tell me a story about robots that learn to paint. The Orin Nano tackled this task admirably, particularly given the challenge of running a model as large and complex as Llama 3.2. Processing a large language model locally requires not only substantial computational power, but also efficient resource allocation. The Orin Nano's reliance on its CUDA cores and six ARM CPU cores demonstrated its optimized architecture for AI workloads. Using all six ARM cores for CPU side operations and offloading as much as possible to its CUDA cores, the system managed to generate around 21 tokens per second. While this might not sound blazing fast as compared to cloud GPUs or the high-end desktops, it's important to remember that this is a 15-watt device. And it's at least an order of magnitude faster than the Pi and then some. The verbose output showed steady token generation with the GPU utilization hovering around 60%. 
The story itself was rich and detailed, and while the processing time was longer than you'd experience on a high-end workstation, the Orin Nano proved is more than capable of running cutting-edge language models. In the end, those 20 tokens per second are easily fast enough to make it responsive enough for fluid text-to-speech, answering questions or using the model to solve problems in real time. For comparison, I ran the same test on an M2 Mac Pro Ultra. And it's a fairly maxed out machine as well with the maximum number of GPU cores. I think it's 76 in the Mac world. And as expected, the Mac outperformed the Orin Nano by a factor of about five, generating tokens at an impressive 113 tokens per second. This performance is largely due to the M2's unified memory architecture and highly efficient neural engine, both of which are optimized for handling AI tasks. The significant difference in token generation speeds highlights the disparity in computational power between the two systems, but also underscores the efficiency of the Orin Nano given its limitations. However, what's fascinating is how close the Orin Nano comes given its size and power constraints. The Mac Pro represents the pinnacle of Apple's desktop processing power with its custom silicon optimized for AI tasks. It also costs more than $10,000. The Orin Nano, on the other hand, is a $249 developer board designed for edge computing. Despite this, it holds its own in a way that's nothing short of remarkable. Now, if you need even more performance out of the system, we can go to a more compact version of Llama 3.2 with only a billion parameters. Doing so more than tripled the speed to an impressive 34 tokens per second, a very fast generation rate. So, why would you use an Orin Nano instead of a more powerful system? Well, the answer lies in its niche. Edge computing applications often prioritize low power consumption, compact form factors, and local processing capabilities. The Orin Nano can run AI models like Llama 3.2 in environments where a full-fledged desktop or server isn't feasible. Think of robots, IoT devices, drones, and that sort of thing. Imagine embedding a language model in a drone for natural language processing as it's flying, allowing it to interact seamlessly with the operators or other devices in real time. And so the Jetson Orin Nano continues to impress with its versatility and raw performance for its size, particularly when compared to other edge computing solutions like a Raspberry Pi or the Coral TPU. Its ability to seamlessly integrate with NVIDIA's AI ecosystem, coupled with its low power consumption and robust hardware, makes it an exceptional choice for developers and researchers looking to push the boundaries of an AI budget. The device strikes a compelling balance between cost, performance, and functionality, I think, solidifying its place in the edge AI landscape. From driveway monitoring to running large language models, this pint-sized AI powerhouse proves that you don't need a data center to do serious AI work. While the M2 Mac Ultra Pro may dominate in raw speed, the Orin Nano's ability to run models like Llama 3.2 locally and efficiently highlights just how far edge computing has come. If you found today's little nano adventure to be any combination of informative or entertaining, remember that I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so I'd be honored if you'd consider subscribing to my channel and leaving a like on the video before you go today. If you're already subscribed, thank you. Please consider turning on the notifications bell. Check out the free sample of my book on Amazon, link in the video description. It's everything I know now about living your best life on the spectrum that I wish I'd known long ago. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. If you've got a moment, check out Dave's Attic, my second channel, where Glenn and I do a podcast every Friday, and there are about 12 back episodes now that you can check out. Link in the video description. In the meantime and in between time, I'll see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. Subscribe.